Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our third workshop for GWPN. And of course, we'll be sending this recording out to everyone. Today, our workshop is run by Shweta Shankar and also Audrey Fernandes, who are both co-founders of Creative Vision Coaching. And today they're going to be talking to us and sharing about goal setting for success. So it's going to be a really good interactive session. So I hand it over to you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you and super excited to be here and rocking out with all you amazing people. So my name is Audrey and Chweta is right there. If you can see her. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, I'm going to upload the amazing document that we have created for today's workshop. Now, I would love to um, invite you all to make this um, creative, exciting, and fun. Um, so show of hands if you're okay with just making this absolutely fun and interactive. Amazing. Because <laughs> it's Wednesday evening, right? Like, yeah. let's, just, let's just create some magic and fun out here and really dig into those nice amazing emotions so that we can create some massive goals because when we come from the space space of excitement and happiness i'm sure you've experienced it that we can set better goals and bigger goals because it comes from the space of love and not fear so i will be sharing my screen where is my screen Ooh. hi in can you all see my screen yes yep Good. So let's get started with first and foremost, who set goals before? All of you. I love that. So you're familiar. We're done with the workshop then. <laughs> Are we just okay to go and have dinner? <laughs> cool. I would love to um, and like invite uh, some of the shares as to what, what have you been your wins? Have you set goals and um, made them happen in this year or you know, some big goals in the past, which you never thought you would achieve, but you've really managed to achieve them after setting them. Who would like to go? Who are the brave ones? Yeah. Oh, you got to get it. Give it a go, man. It's going to be super interactive. I'll, I'll start. <laughs> Um, so I'm a bit of, I've been known as a bit of a dreamer in my entire life. Um, so big goal setter. And if I look back, I have achieved um, some many of my goals, including my career as a teacher, um, working with Women's Federation for World Peace. Um, I'm in the middle of project development at the moment. So there, um, Pacifica Festival is also a goal of running events in, in Melbourne. Um, mm -hmm. At the moment, I'm, I set a goal with my mentor, Venerable, who unfortunately is not here today. Um, and that was we wanted to develop a project together, which we have started. The, um, opening the International Centre for Inner Peace and Happiness um, and also doing some more mindfulness retreats, which is another goal I set. Um, public speaking was one that I set at the two years ago or three years ago. And funny enough, I've done now maybe five or six major events where I've actually got up and wow. spoken in public, which wow. I've never thought that was me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, yeah. you know, meeting Anne and the Women's Federation and other opportunities have come up that have given me that opportunity. And then working with my mentor, I've allowed to kind of reflect on how I've been, how I go and what I can do in the future to improve yeah. my yeah. public speaking. Um, I know confidence isn't a major issue for me, <laughs> but sometimes being overconfident can actually be um, a hindrance. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's about that finding that balance. Um, mm. and yeah, I mean, I can't think of much on the top of my head, but I think as a teacher, we also set goals with the children. Uh, we call mm. them smart goals. Um, that classic old smart goal term. Oh yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and in order for, in terms of students, it allows them to see something that they want and then work their way towards it. And then during that stage, you can reflect and see how far they've come and what they need to do to yep, get yep, yep. 
Um, and then it's, it's a sense of achievement. I think there's yeah. a really important thing in life about, oh, I did something, I got there, you know, and then you can yeah. move forward from that. I feel like a motivation factor, I guess. So, yeah. yeah. Love that, Susie. You, sh so, you shared so many golden nuggets. That was so beautiful. It's about setting those goals because if you don't know where you're going, then any, any road will take you there, right? But if you know where we're going and you set those goals, how amazing it is to celebrate those wins. And it helps to build self-confidence and self-esteem because we have achieved it. And those paths that, you know, you pave towards them then helps you to achieve bigger and better things. So goals create a pathway towards a big vision. And I love how you shared in different areas of life. And that's what today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the wheel of life and we're going to look at smart goals that you mentioned as well, and really look at setting ourselves for the 2023. And it's so important to start doing it now because once it comes to December and November, when the party starts, we really forget about all of that. And we get into this crazy dinner parties and drink parties. And then it comes to Jan and you're like, oh, I didn't start the year right. And then maybe, you know, I'll think about it later. So let's plan now and really start thinking about what have we achieved in the year and what is possible for, you, for us to achieve. Stepping on those paths and the, what we have created already, what can we achieve bigger and better if nothing were to stop? And if there were no fears that came through, what is it possible for us? How can we create a beautiful life? And that's why goal setting is extremely important because it helps you to focus. Where focus goes, energy flows, results show. So if you want to see the results, set goals, celebrate, celebrate achieving those results. And it really helps you to overcome procrastination because you already know what do you want to achieve? So you wake up in the morning and it's like, ah, oh, I don't know what I'm doing today. You already have things to do. So you don't have to procrastinate. You can just proceed. And so goal setting is an extremely important exercise. And I would highly encourage, we do it with our teams, our clients and ourselves. We do it every quarter. So we are literally doing it for the quarter coming up, October, November, December. However, it's a great time to also start thinking about the 2023. So let's move on. Now, there is an amazing statistics which is conducted by the Harvard Business Study, which reveals that 14% of the people who have set goals are 10 times more likely to succeed. And 3% with written goals are three times more successful. So writing your goals is very, very powerful. And to add to that, it's writing involves a lot of modalities. You're going to see them. You're going to hear when you say it, oh, yes, I want to achieve it. You're going to feel it in your hand with the pen. So there is a lot of you seeing, you're feeling, you're listening. A lot of modalities are involved. And the more modalities you include in doing anything, it helps you to achieve that outcome sooner because it's more ingrained in you, yeah? And 92% and of the people actually never set goals. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Yeah. So they don't even do their to-do list every day? Like, I have my daily goals <laughs> and, like, you know? <laughs> so people really don't set goals they just they could do to-do list for the day but setting goals for the for what they want to achieve the vision for their lives people don't go through their lives consciously people actually go through their life with the reaction reactivity what is going to happen I will address that rather than I will plan my life so that is a part of building self-esteem that you start really taking the power in your own hands. 
Now we have 45 minutes. I would highly encourage all of you to grab a paper and pen so that we can go through the next exercises with really using all the modalities. Now, is there anyone who wants to share if you've set goals before or how it has been for you in the meanwhile? We want to hear someone new. Come on. Some brave soldiers here. Um, I think I set goals or I use goals as a way to one, keep myself organized. So like a to-do yeah. list during the day, yeah. but also to manage complexity. So for example, I remember when I was applying for my studies here, you know, there is this document with a list of maybe 20 documents you need to submit. And the first one needs to be translated, mm. authenticated, signed. So there are many things, parallel things that I need to, let's say, prepare. But then each one of them requires mm. a step-by-step -step process. Because yeah. you cannot get yeah. it signed before it's translated. And mm -hmm. so you need to follow an order and you need to make sure you follow, you tick all the boxes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think that's um, how I also, I remember setting goals for myself, like, okay, find all the documents, then take the package to the translator. I then, love that, I um, love that. Things like that. So I think yeah. goals help me manage those things, complexity, and let's say, yeah, stay organized. Love what you just shared, Jennifer. It is um, also, um, I don't know if you've heard this, overwhelm is not knowing the how. And what you're really doing is breaking it into the small parts in order to not let your brain also go into an overwhelm. Because when you're like, oh my God, I need to finish all of this. But then you're creating these small tasks and you're making them achievable. As a result, it is manageable for your brain as well as you're setting targets for yourself. So in so many ways, what you're doing is so wonderful. So well done. Thanks, thanks, thanks for sharing that phrase as well. Like, wow, yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah, overwhelm is not knowing the how. Because when do we feel overwhelmed when we don't have the clear steps on what to do? Simplest way is break it down and voila, we have the solution. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. So is there anyone else who wants to share? Or There's some beautiful, there's a little monkey. Oh, that is Susie. I'm like, who is this cute little monkey? <laughs> cool. So is anyone here familiar? Are you talking something, Susie? Because you were on mute and we couldn't hear anything. Sorry, I, I forgot I changed my photo for another meeting I had. Uh, <laughs> I'm the monkey. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. It was very cute. <laughs> All right. So what we'll do is we'll actually go through um, the smart goals exercise. Uh, smart. What is smart? And even like every time I do this, it just reminds me of how how important it is to go through um, the exercise of understanding if it is measurable. I have had clients come to me and say, I want to build more confidence. And I'm like, how is that a goal? If you, how will you know if you have reached there? I want to be more confident and I will apply for a job. So you have set yourself a target which is not achievable because you will never know when you feel confident. And that's why when you set uh, certain conditions on something. I, when I feel more capable, I will do this. Or when I feel more confident, I will do this. I feel strong, then I will do it when the time is right. So these sort of caveats we put in place when we want to really procrastinate. So that's why SMART goals helps you to just review it and see, is this specific? Now, when you say, I will feel confident, I will achieve something, I'll start a business. How do you measure it? What? That's why it's very important to go through this exercise. Yeah. So for instance, if somebody says, I want to feel more confident and I'll do something. So how will you know you feel confident? What will need to have done in order for you to get that feeling? And that's when you start drilling into more specifics. 
right? Have you ever had um, like an occasion or situation where you have had a very vague goal and you, you don't know when you've achieved it? Does anyone want to share or anyone has any insights on it? Where you've set a goal, but you never knew when you've achieved it because it was so vague. Oh, looks like I'll be calling names because <laughs> half of them I can't see. So are you ready to get off mute and on camera, guys? Charlotte, can you share with us, please? Hello. Okay. Yes, Charlotte. <laughs> Hello, I'm having my dinner. That's why I'm sorry. What is yummy, yummy for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have my camera off. <laughs> there is our invite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charlie, have you had an ad uh, this where you've set a goal, but you didn't know when you've achieved it? Uh, I can't think of when cool. go. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Um, I know I have a lot of goals. Like um, like last couple of years, I started to focus on it. I used to have many goals, and then um, some of them I yeah, will not even start them. Mm. And I, I realized that I'm, I was uh, setting myself to fail because I was setting up many goals. Oh. Um, last couple of years, I started to just narrow, have focus on one or two goals. Mm. 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 That's a wonderful thing that you shared. Many times we plan too big. We set ourselves a target that we're like, mm -hmm. we will fail. And then we fail. And then we beat ourselves on the failure. And then we never set again with that fear that we will fail. So it's kind of a cycle that goes on. And that's also another sort of a contrast scenario where we are not setting it that is achievable right so one of the things that is we have to take care of is it is achievable now not setting something that is very small but really looking at as you develop this habit of setting the goals you will be able to go back and reference like for instance this morning we did for our clients and we we're like okay last quarter have a look at your goal what did you achieve and can we go a little bit extra this quarter and set a goal that is not overtly extremely bigger, but relatively bigger than what it was last time. So you're constantly stretching, learning and growing from there. So when you fo follow the SMART framework, it becomes specific, it should be measurable. As Charlotte just shared, it should be achievable. Otherwise, it plays onto your self-esteem. It should be realistic. It's not like, I am going to have a million dollar business in my first year. Like, hey, right? Unless somebody comes and sponsors you, that's not going to happen. Or I'm going to get a 500K job in next two years. Well, that's not going to happen, right? Like, so set something that is realistic. and timely as well sometimes we just said i will have million dollars by when i will save ten thousand dollars by when so really setting a time to it i want to lose weight like since how long are you trying to lose weight and it's like oh for a very long time so <laughs> like set a realistic goal five kilos by end of 2022 and 20th December or 30th December. So having it realistically targeted really gives you that ability to achieve it and build your self-esteem because the self-talk that you have with yourself, like I cannot achieve it, I fail all the time is because of you really preparing yourself to fail anyways. And that's why this framework is very important. Now, what I would love to for you to do is take your paper and pen and draw this circle, the wheel of life. Has any one of you done this exercise before, the wheel of life? No? Ooh, Anne has. You have, Anne? Do you like it? It's a wonderful uh, It is really helpful. And when you draw it around, 
you see where the bubbles are bigger and smaller. So, yeah, yeah it was has a good visual effect. Absolutely. So what this exercise is, is these are the eight different areas of your life. And we, as we, um, you know, Susie shared, she set goals in different areas of life. This really gives you um, a, a, like a helicopter view of your life. And when you set goals and you just think about, oh, I'm going to set goals. However, when you set goals with the framework of wheel of life, you're able to set goals in all different areas of your life. Right. And this is where you will be able to understand, are you setting it more smart goals or you just set, setting just vague goals? For instance, one of the area which is health or relationships. I want to have better relationships. Well, how do you know it's better? It's a goal. It's a good goal. But how do you know what does need to happen in order for you to know that it is a better relationship? You need to have conversations. How often? every day for how long one hour okay what kind of conversations need to happen so you start becoming more specific using the smart goal framework so let's go ahead and draw the circle divide it into eight parts show me a thumbs up when you've done it this exercise literally you should keep in the forefront every single week I literally put it in front of me every single week to see which area of the, my life was focused last week and what area can I focus this week. Because sometimes what happens is sometimes we focus only on work and we forget about relationships or we focus only on health and we're not focused on other parts, social life side of it. And we lose the touch with other areas of your life and then we feel incomplete, we feel lost. This really gives you um, a, like a, a, what is that? Like a lighthouse where to go to. So every week when you plan your week, keep it in front of you. What do I need to do in this area? So let's start. What would be your goal for 2023 in finances? And make sure that it is a smart goal, right? So I will need to have added 10% more to my income, or I need to have invested into shares, or I need to have another income coming in, or I need to have this much saved for my Europe trip, or this much saved for my education. Whatever that is, be specific with that area. Cool. So what now you're going to do is in the circle, this is the, so how you fill up this exercise, I'll show you. So I will stop share and I will show you a whiteboard and whiteboard. Go. Can you all see the whiteboard? Yes. Yeah, cool. So what you basically do is draw a, oh, this is not what I wanted. I'm just, so this is your wheel. It's really bad wheel, but <laughs> these are the different areas of your life. I could have done it better. So if this is finances, here is the zero and here is the 10. So say you feel currently you are um, you are doing say 100k in your income. Mark yourself from zero to 10 where you're at. What would be an ideal for 2023? I would like to have 120k. So that becomes your goal for 2023. So you mark where you are and you set based on that where you want to be yeah any questions around this now i will look at other one for instance you look at friendships so if this is friendships okay so this is the lowest in friendship so say i don't have any friends and i would love to have friends so i am a zero 
But if I have at least a couple of friends who I love and, um, but I don't spend enough time, then it's maybe a two or three. What would it be to have an amazing time with my friendships? How many friends would I like to have? Or what kind of connection I need to have? Or I can at least have once a month catch up with them, um, maybe watch movies or go for coffees and have some good um, you know, times when I catch up with them and tell them what's happening with my life. So that is a goal. So that sounds like a 10. Currently, I am a five based on, you know, I don't really go out with them. I don't call them. I don't do anything with them. I just wish them on the birthday or maybe not even that. So that's how you mark friendships. Next is mental health. Mental health of, say you are working with your coach and, you know, you make sure you do meditation, you, you take care of your mindset, you do rituals and habits and rituals, everything is in place. Then you're probably an eight. But say you're constantly feeling overwhelmed, you feel lost and lonely, and you're not doing anything about your mental health, like reading books around mental health or like indulging into some sort of healthy rituals or some sort of mindfulness activities, yoga, or reading about things, watching things that will help you to build a better mindset, then you're a zero. Then think about what do you need to do in 2023 in order for you to mark it at a very high so that you can come back in 2023 and see, oh yeah, this year I did something about my mental health. It's extremely important to focus on mental health, right? Especially pandemic has been a big eye opener for so many people to realize that it is so important. We are not comfortable. Most of us are not comfortable being alone, being locked down. So how can we develop the self-leadership so that we are feeling like we don't need connections to fulfill our needs, but we need con connections to enhance our life? right? To bring more joy in life, but we are comfortable on our own. So how can we get to that state of not like the Lai Lama Zen state, but really a state where we feel more confident about ourselves. We can deal with the ups and downs of the life. So one of my mentors says, right? Happiness is not everything going well in your life. Happiness is a state of mind knowing that no matter what happens around you, you still know that you can take care of things. Life never is going to be just smooth. What is the definition of smooth? Again, it is not smart, right? <laughs> smart goals. <laughs> so that's mental health. Now let's go to family. See where we are at your, with your family. Zero is in the center of the circle and 10 is here. So what would you like to have with your family? Maybe have dinners every day, have those amazing trips throughout the year or whatever is your definition of spending time with family and feeling loved. So look at from the perspective of now where it is at. Oh, I don't see my family at all. I don't want anything to do with them. Great. I mean, if that's the decision you made, just cancel out that section. Um, but if you have some sort of goals with family, then think about what actively needs to happen. And it's not about waiting others to initiate. What can you do from your end in order to achieve this? So one of the things that I often tell my clients is do not come from the space of blame that my parents should be initiating or my kids should be initiating or my partner should be doing more. Do your bit. Do your bit and then think, is this still bearable for you? And then go next. But first put your 100% into what you want to achieve. Yeah. So have clear, smart ideas. You want to spend amazing time with your family. How do you measure it? Smart goals. What does spending time mean? How often? 
every week, every month, every year, birthdays, or every single day. Be very specific about it. Yeah. And then you mark it. That is family. Then we go to spirituality. When I remember doing this, mine was zero spirituality. I was like, wow, what is spirituality? So it's not going into Himalayas and meditation. That is not spirituality or you elevate from your chair and go high up. That's not spirituality. Now, spirituality is very, and it's not religion as well. It's not about just, you know, worshiping an idol or, uh, you know, going into temples or going for pilgrimage and stuff like that. It's whatever you define spirituality. It's oneness with yourself. It could be oneness with the one. It could be just feeling in that zone where you are you. So whatever the definition is for you. And rate yourself from one to ten. As what is it that you would like to be? When I didn't know what spirituality was, I had a goal of being comfortable, being me and not having, um, you know, like this random thoughts and constant anxiety about what others are thinking, where others are, what should I be doing right now? Should I be attending a party? Should I be doing that? Just being where I was and being there present. That's what was for me was spirituality, really feeling the moment. And rate yourself. So that is spirituality. Then we go home. Now, oh, what just happened? Home. Home can be very differently interpreted again by each one of us, right? It could be the physical environment at home, if it is clean, good, great. Or it could be the habits and rituals around your home. So this is your wheel of life. However you want it to roll, this is your wheel. Um, so home is, again, what you would like to see at home. And what would you like to see in 2023 as a goal for yourself? Where you're at and what would you like to see? I've been talking for way too long. Does anyone has any questions I want to share so far? What have you, you know, what is coming up for you? What you're loving, what you're learning? Ooh, looks like I'm going to pick on someone else just now. <laughs> I'm excited. You better be. So we'll go with Sharon. <laughs> hey, Sharon, how are you? I am good. Thank you. How are you? Wonderful, and I love your butterflies and flowers. My goodness, I feel like you're in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> oh dear, what am I doing for me? Um, oh, probably not much at the moment. I'm still in. I'm still in work brain at the moment. Uh -oh, so okay. I, yeah, I was, why I was late. I just logged off a call, so I'm still just trying to. What do you call it? Wind down. I think for the day. It's yeah. been a long day. Um, yeah. Um, talk about have you, the, have you done this exercise before, Sharon? Yes, but probably slightly different. Mm. The Wheel of Life, more around planning and organizing your time. Mm. So we're using the Wheel of Life to where you spend your time. Do you spend too much time with your family? Do you spend too much time with friends? So slightly different headings. So yeah, 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 very, very, very similar, but yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a very versatile model. I love it. That's why I love it. It can be uh, used in so many different ways. Yeah. So um, on the, on the, on the spirituality, um, yeah, I suppose, um, yeah, I think just being present, I could probably devote more time. Um, mm. I think, I think it, um, the work-life balance Mm -hmm. as well comes into play there um, and taking that time out to to relax and just unwind yeah um, I, I think sometimes we don't do enough of it and then I suppose that comes back to your spirituality so yeah 
Sure. Amazing. And, and uh, it's interesting how work-life balance can be interpreted in so many different ways, right? Again, it is not measurable. So <laughs> what is balance? <laughs> so um, yeah, and this wheel really helps you to sort of Oh well, I'm going too heavy on this side. So can I can I bring here and then again this side? Then can I bring this up here? So sometimes life can can throw challenges at us where we can be heavily focused in one area of life. So this really tool helps us to bring us back, recenter ourselves as to, all right, I need to maybe focus on other areas of life. So thank you once again, Sharon. Really appreciate your share. No, no, that's fine. And um, yeah, that's so true. The work-life balance, you look at the wheel, your family, your health. And I think if you spend too much time in the work, you're not balancing it. You're not, you're not true to yourself. So, mm. and that's, I think if you look at the wheel, yeah, sort of, it, you can put that into all of the, all of the um, parts that you've got. Yeah. And, and setting goals. Many times we just set goals in one area of life and what happens to the other areas, right? Like we think of, oh, I want a success in my business, but hey, you have a family, you have kids. What about them? You know, what about your partner? What about, you know, friends? Are you going to let everything go just to make achieve business success in business? Then what happens to them? So this really recenters us and gives us a perspective on life. What is really important? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, the next one is the careers and education. So one of the things that we have really embraced since the time we started um, you know, into personal development is having learning and education and growth as a, a primary value. And that has helped us massively in really cultivating learning in every form. So reading and learning from mentors, learning from like everything that is a learning opportunity. So Career and education can be interpreted in, um, I'll just share my screen. Career and education can be interpreted in so many ways. It can, we are all creatures of, you know, we, we are always ever growing creatures. So how can we cultivate learning and growing in every day, every way, every form of life? How can we learn about each other more? How can we build better relationships? So that's the wheel we have completed. Now, how many of you have actually completed the wheel? Yay. Now, one of the important things which I, um, I forgot to um, share was, look at the wheel as if it's like a, a wheel of the car you drive, right? Or you like ride a bicycle or the, drive the car. And as you mark, start realizing that some of the areas are, are maybe a zero or a two or three, and some areas are maybe a seven and an eight. So if it was a wheel, and if these areas were like all like this, how would your car drive? Not smooth for sure. <laughs> yeah. So start thinking on how we can really bring that all areas and live a fulfilling life by adding and working consciously in all areas of life, which is really powerful. Yeah. Now, one of the things, uh, this, docu this workbook has a lot of tools that will help you in achieving. One of the things that is really, really phenomenal with goal setting is modeling. Modeling is basically looking at which other person has that area of life figured out completely. And what can you learn from them? So for instance, if you want to achieve athletic body, ask somebody who is, has athletic body, what do you do? You wake up in the morning at 5 a.m. and you eat greens and you have smoothie and then you you know, go for workout and blah, blah, blah. Now, if you set a goal for yourself to have an athletic body, to be a marathon runner or to be participating in some sort of things. And if this person is doing that by waking up at 5 a.m. and going to the gym two hours and eating well, do you think you can achieve it by waking up at 10 a.m. and eating burgers and chips? 
Absolutely. Uh, that's the power of modeling, right? Many times, now this is a very personified example, I would say. But many times people say, I want to have a business one day. Have you actually spoken to a business owner and found out what they do? What time they wake up? How much effort they put in? What do they learn and grow? Right? So we sometimes set goals without really realizing what it takes. And then we think we cannot succeed at it. But have we really spoken to an ex example of excellence and found out what they do? And have we tried to do what they have done? Because if you do what they are doing, then you're bound to get what they get. Cool. Rest of the, the workbook is for you to really, really tap into it, read it. If you have, there's a lot of bonus stuff. There is about gratitude, which is extremely important. There is about KonMari method, about really cleansing and how you can do declutter your home. There is books that we've recommended, so go through it. And because we have another 15 minutes, I would love to open up the conversation for any questions, any shares, what you've loved and learned from the session today. And if you're quiet, then your name's going to get called. <laughs> I'm going to call my name. Hello. Hello. I'll be a good girl. Go for it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, Thank you for the presentation. It's really interesting, the Wheel of Life Circle. Mm. And it's, uh, I would like to take another spin to it, that while as in human beings and individuals, we become quite uh, unfair to ourselves. And, you know, we have really tight expectations and high expectations and then those expectations are never meant because some of those elements around the spirituality of life are not tangible, mm -hmm. like finances, 5,000, 10,000 or whatever. That is achievable or not achievable, but happiness cycle, you know, education level. And sometimes some people are never happy because I know that their expectations are not real mm -hmm. and something in them. So what is my question is, you know, putting this thing, that I understand that, you know, okay, we achieve certain goals. Okay, I've done my work. I've done these meetings. Take off the day. I go, go back home, feed my family. Good. These are a few things that are fine. It's a good goal to carry on. But you know what I'm coming from? How do, as a human being, beings who are harder on themselves, with the hard expectation levels that they don't, they know it's not achievable, but they can't, their brain doesn't really function that way. They don't want to think the other way. So what are the suggestions and guidelines for them? So your question is, what is when a person is not satisfied with what they achieve? No, satisfaction is another thing. Okay. My thing is that because as a human being, I'll just put an example if I can explain it the way I want to. Happiness. Mm. Like you can't count my happiness, you know? No. So there's no tangibility tangibility thing that you know what is the what makes me happy and what is exactly what makes me sad you know so that is so these are not tangible so, and by education what i want to achieve in life or if i'm going there and you know constant learning it's good whatever for someone it's really good and for some it's quite boring but how do we those people who have hired at unexpected goals from life how they can tap into to be more realistic. Let's put it like that. How people who have unexpected goals can be realistic. Now, this is a very, very meta frame question. So when you said unrealistic goals, it goes in so many different uh, range of uh, areas, right? There are some people who actually set unrealistic goals because they don't want to work towards it because they want to tell others that it is so unrealistic that I cannot achieve it. But I said big goals. So you would have seen people who talk about big things, but not really do much about it. Then there are people who will set big goals and get so busy in achieving it because they gain their significance from it and compromise every other area of life. Now that happens with um, you know, you you from childhood onwards, you've been trained to get significance. So you just want to get something and achieve to get a feeling of significance. 
Now, to give you a shorter answer to this is many of our human behaviors are driven from our childhood, our tribal cycle, as to what was expected by our family for us to be worthy. As a kid, you would have seen the drive to achieve score the best marks in the school because parents gave validation for it. And that kid grows older and older and starts to achieve a lot more things because that is the only way they know they will get validation and be accepted. And they go on setting bigger goals and striving hard to achieve it. So really tapping into the happiness is, or being you is getting rid of that tribal influence, getting rid of those conditioning from, um, you know, you were expected to be really, really successful in life because your parents are successful and really tapping into what you stand for and you don't need anyone else's validation, but you only need your own. When you get to that level of work that you can do, that's when you truly tap into your own potential. Otherwise, you're constantly striving to prove yourself to either yourself, your family, or your friends, or your society, or somebody that is a level of people pleasing. Yeah? So there, it's it's a it's a wonderful question that you ask, but there are so many levels of things that happen in order for a personality to behave a particular way. However, if you decide to do work for yourself, we can. We cannot change anybody else. We cannot change anyone else. We can change ourselves to look at things differently. So if you resonate with that behavior, then for you, I can point you towards resources that will help you to start working on it. But if it is somebody else, then they will have to have that inclination to do the work, to realize that, you know, they're not really focused on being present for themselves and for others around them, but are really focused on worldly, worldly desires that they think will make them superior, significant, so that they are accepted in the world. Thank you. No, some resources would be good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for, uh, it would be good for all of us to learn and we come across so many people. It's, it's it be beautiful. Good. And that's what I said when I said learning and growing. It's learning from so many different things we can learn from books which is fiction as well it's learning our patterns of behaviors learning how people turn out to be a particular way how habits and rituals of people can benefit in a better way learning simple things also can give so much amazing results it's not like research-based learning but it is simple learning you know what i mean <laughs> thank you there are some books listed in the thing um, and also feel free to connect with me. I can get you, um, send you some more resources as well. Um, Audrey, I have a question. I was um, looking at the PDF that you shared and um, I think it's on page seven. Uh, the tall poppy syndrome is described yeah. and yeah. I... It's very interesting because I think most of us on on the surface, we say, oh yes, we, I want to do better, I want to succeed. But then at a subconscious level, uh, there is, I don't know, this fear or this belief of, no, I don't want to do, to really go for that goal or, or I don't really want to do that because yeah. what if what if I fail? What if someone doesn't like it? What if I look bad? So, yeah. um, it, it was very interesting for me that, that you mentioned that and there is a name for such <laughs> yes. a feeling or it's a thing. Very Aussie name. <laughs> yeah, but if you could um, yeah, it share is. your it thoughts is. or that would be great. And it, it's it's amazing that you pointed this out. And this is this comes from the tribal thinking, right? So if you go back to the caveman era, if you did something that was not in alignment with your role. So if you belong to a tribe, right? And if you are out of the tribe, a saber to tiger will come and eat you up. Now, if you're in the tribe, if you do something better than the tribe and that is not your role, then the tribe will refuse you or reject you. 
And then what happens, right? Then you're alone. So we have carried forwarded that psychology, that thinking in our current life, in the current era, where we think that if we do better than somebody else, my friends, like I have the same experience, right? So I, that's where I met Shweta seven years ago. Um, I signed up for this nine kilos in six weeks weight loss program. And um, I went to my friends and we had this huge party and went there and they were like, I'm like, hey, I've signed up for this nine kilos in six weeks party, uh, uh, not party, the weight loss program. And they're like, oh, don't do it, Audrey, don't do it. it I, I went for it and it is a scam, don't do it. And they all were like, it is a scam. It's scientifically so wrong. You're going to fail, don't do it. And I was like, wow, okay. Now I went home and I'm like, shit, should I back out? Like, looks like they don't like it. Now, if I if I continue to hang out with them, they're not gonna accept me into it, right? So I went through these whole emotions where should I join in or should I? So I joined in, I literally stopped hanging out with them because I'm like, if I go there, they're going to not like it, right? And they tried, like they tried to tell me off even while I was in the program. And eventually I ended up buying the franchisee for that place and owning my first business. But if I had listened to them, I would not have been even here today because that was how I it was introduced to my professional coaching course. And today I am here. But I would have belonged to that corporate world where I was safe and I had to belong and do what they did. So when, um, in, when you come across this kind of... Uh, this it's important to know who has done again using the modeling right and having the goal i want to be this are these people going to help me to get get me there if they are not then maybe i need to change my circle so what helped me was you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with so look at the people is this where i want to go maybe not then i need to surround myself with people where i which, who will help me to get where i want to go Cool. So tall poppy is very much good pickup. Keep it in the forefront because that will help you to constantly remind you I shouldn't be here if they're telling me not to go forward. Wow, thank you so much. Pleasure. Any other questions? Ooh, we've got three minutes, guys. Let's make the most of it. Um, N, the other N. Oh. <laughs> Yay! Oh, oh my goodness, look at the number of books behind you. <laughs> you're on mute, and we can't hear you. We can't Anne? hear you, you're on mute. We can't hear you, you're on mute. <laughs> so I say I just changed my position to the study room. So yeah, and yeah, I'm very, very grateful to have this opportunity to come in to uh, to learn some new things and then it's very fascinated and then see all the the wheels I haven't seen them before but I mean yeah so, so just oh wonderful like, let me know yeah. I have attached the document download it do the exercise if you have questions please reach out happy to help yes yes yes, yes I will I mean this is all like uh, um yeah I, I know the 45 minutes you can't really deliver everything but the, yeah. just pinpoints a few area and then I say wow that is a, just a fantastic Thank you. Thank you. All your <laughs> wonderful presentation. Yes. Pleasure. Pleasure. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, Anything else? Yi Jung, is that how I pronounce your name? I just saw you on video. So that was exciting. Hi. Hi, Hi. how are you? Good. What did you love? What did you learn? Or give us feedback. Tell us. I mean, I did. I did the circle right there. So oh wow! It. it looks yeah. really nice. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, so it's kind of like fading off. But anyway, so my like this exercise really helped me to realize that I focus so much on the finance, career, home, and friendship, but my health and mental health and spirituality it's like two. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, wow. I had no idea about it. So it was really good opportunity for me to like learn. Okay, I'm focusing so many like that's the external, but not yeah. 
internal. Yeah. So I yeah. just made my mind. It's like, okay, I got to start doing my exercise again. And I'll have to really tap into spirituality and sleeping well and all that. Because I'm even like right now, while I was listening to you, I'm like doing this weak bag around my neck here. Just, yeah. just because it's so sore. Like last night I was taking a <laughs> painkiller to sleep. So it's like, obviously my health is really like, I know it's like, I was like, wow, if I didn't listen to your lecture today, then I'll be like just neglecting it and breaking apart. So but wow. so it was really That's good wonderful yeah share. wonderful share and i would love to you know encourage you to keep it in your forefront and i hope we can catch up in the next year and you have done massive progress <laughs> yes yes i'm, I'm I like really have to set it up so well it's really done. I think that was a big one in our show. <laughs> yeah thank you everyone thank you <laughs> Anyone else would like to share, add to what we've done? What you we love? We have Bodhi Tita, who is still behind the curtains. Do you want to say hello? Can hello. we see you today in the last one minute? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, is there anything you want to share? You, what did you love? What did you learn? Any feedback for us? Please feel free to, you know, jump off mute and let us know. Mute. And we can't hear you. Hello. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Anne. <laughs> cool, guys. So before we wrap up, thank you so much for showing up today. Thank you so much for contributing and really, really doing the exercise. Um, take the worksheet and do the work because it's beautiful. It has helped us and I, I'm sure it will help you in your journey. If there is any way we can support you more, please reach out uh, where we can uh, and can pass on your contact details. We would love to help you more and support you more. Thank you once again. It's been a pleasure having you. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, ladies. Bye. Bye, Jennifer. Bye, Sharon. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.